Hi, welcome to my video for Arduino Week 2023. My name is Miloš, I'm an electrical engineer from Serbia, currently pursuing a master's degree with my main focus being on robotics, as you can see from this guy here. I work part-time as a hardware engineer working on new PCB designs or just trying to troubleshoot some old PCB designs. In my spare time, I work on my projects as you can see again by this guy here or as you can see by some equipment that I'll show later on. Uh, in this video we're gonna be filming in my home lab as obviously you can tell by all of the tools in the background as well as all of the other test equipment here. I started with Arduino around 8 years ago. Back in 2015 the first Arduino I ever bought uh, was an Arduino Uno starter kit. I managed to find a single store in Serbia that actually had them in stock and I was thrilled when I managed to turn on and off the LED for the first time. Since then I've done countless electronics projects and a lot of them actually use an Arduino since it can, be, it can be really easily integrated into them. So let's get started. Before we get to the main topic of this video that's sitting next to me or better said parked next to me, I'm gonna show you some of my older Arduino projects first. First, for example, let's look at my constant current load. Uh, what's a constant current load? It's a great piece of test equipment that you can actually make rather easily using just analog components or you can put maybe an Arduino into the mix as I did. Uh, what it does is that you can actually program it to draw constant current from a power source. That can be really useful when you're testing out circuits, power electronics, batteries and stuff like that. Uh, I used an Arduino Nano 33 IoT uh, in this device because it has an uh, integrated DAC which was really easy to integrate with uh, the rest of the electronics in this build. And it proved to be rather reliable and, it really useful, and a really useful piece of test equipment. Uh, another project that I did was this drone that hasn't flown in a while as you can see by the motor not being attached. It actually used three Arduinos. One uh, Arduino Nano was in the RC transmitter, one was in the RC receiver that was on the drone, and the last Arduino that you can still see here is the flight controller. Uh, this is a project I did about two years ago, and I actually got it flying pretty good, but since I want to change a lot of stuff on it, as on most of my projects, it's still kind of a work in progress that I wish to visit again. Now let's get to the main topic of this video. This rover right here. This is the Orb Weaver Rover 2. Uh, it's highly inspired by the NASA rovers like the Curiosity or the Perseverance. Uh, this was my diploma project actually. This is the project I had to complete to get my bachelor's degree. Uh, the goal of this project was to make a robotics platform that I can easily work on at sensors, actuators, and generally work with pathfinding, path planning algorithms, SLAM, and stuff like that. Let's look at some key features of this road. First of all, it has four wheel steering, as you can see by the servo motors on top of the wheels. Every wheel also has a drive motor inside with a custom designed 3D printed gearbox. Uh, the gearbox has an additional reduction of uh, 1 to 10, which means that the torque increases tenfold. Uh, another thing that we can see here are the wheels. Uh, the wheel, uh, you will see the, uh, all of the parts of the wheels uh, shortly, but just to explain the principle behind the wheels is that each of these uh, PLA printed parts actually acts as a spring because there's no shock absorbers anywhere else on the rover, they actually work as shock absorbers and you can see that they're actually quite flexible and by varying the thickness of the, those spokes you can actually make harder or softer springs. Now the core component of the rover that actually inspired me to build the rover is actually a mechanical part of the NASA rovers and that's the suspension. The NASA rovers use something that's called a rocker bogey suspension what it does is that if this wheel, for example, lifts 20 degrees, the body will lift only 10 degrees. So that all of the angles that can actually affect the body are halved. 
uh, as you can see here it's the, uh, this works in the same way but uh, the same principle but it uses some different components instead of a rocker here it actually uses a differential underneath but that actually allowed me to add a servo motor which can actually automatically adjust the level of the rover so it's always stable but as you can see here with even with the motor turned off if I lift the wheel this high that the body of the rover didn't uh, uh, only did half the angle uh, another thing of the rover that we can also see is the mast and the head the head has two degrees of uh, freedom as you can see here is where the Raspberry Pi camera should be and on top we also have a 360 degree LiDAR that's actually really useful for slam and stuff like that that's something I want to combine with the two degrees of freedom of the head and to do some more exotic algorithms, let's say. So let's take a look at how all of the internals on the rover work. I'll now go through the 3D model and show you all of the things I showed you on the rover itself. But uh, sub-assembly by sub-assembly. We'll first start with the head and neck assembly and we'll first look at the pitch axis of the rover. Uh, it's also a gear reduction and we are using a servo motor that has position feedback. As for the yaw assembly, uh, we can see that we are using the same servo and we are using a different gearing so we can get a 360 degree uh, rotation. Now we are going to look at the wheel assembly. The steering servo is a standard servo with just 180 degrees and that's something I plan on changing. This is how the wheel is made. It's made from a PVC pipe and all of the 3D printed parts that I already showed you. Now we're gonna look at the spokes that I talked to you about and depending on the thickness we can vary how stiff the springs themselves are. Now we go to the gearbox and motor assembly. The motor that I'm using already has a planetary gearbox but it needed more torque so I added a two-step gear reduction that reduces the speed by 10 so it, it, it increases the torque by 10. Suspension differential is the key component of the whole rover as I already said and it's the one thing that was highly inspired by the NASA rovers that whole uh, differential suspension style. So first let's look at some pictures of how the actual differential looks. Here you can see it uh, printed out of multiple PLAs and attached to 2020 extrusions and here is how the whole system works. So the servo motor you can see on the left, it's a continuous servo motor, but it wasn't strong enough. So I had to add a two stage gear reduction, which you can see on the here, first stage and second stage, the blue green and the white green gears. And the differential itself, it's actually only the red gears in the center. Here is how I added those gears after actually trying out and seeing that the motor doesn't have enough torque but it all worked out in the end it was a bit of a tight squeeze to get everything into one package but thankfully it all worked out in the end and here in the end we have the differential that you can see with the bevel gears and for the rods i use i just used m8 threaded rods with eight millimeter bearings this is something that maybe I can approve on a bit to have uh, less slack in the system. The electronics on the rover can be separated into three categories. The power electronics, the Raspberry Pi electronics and the Arduino electronics. I'll concentrate on the Arduino electronics of course, but just briefly, power electronics include the LiPo battery, the relays, the fuses, while the Raspberry Pi electronics include Literally the Raspberry Pi, its power supply and its connection to the IMU and the Arduino. So let's look at the Arduino electronics now. Arduino is used as a hardware controller in the rover. So Raspberry is running ROS on it, uh, doing all of the algorithms. And all of the actuation is actually done through the Arduino. So Arduino controls seven servo motors, two L298N motor drivers, which are controlling the four uh, driving motors. So here we can see the schematic of everything that's connected and here we can see the picture of all of the electronics without the Arduino and the As mentioned before, the rover is still a work in progress, but I managed to conduct some tests. Here you can see the rover turning its wheels first to zero, then to 180 degrees. This means that the rover can actually move from side to side freely. This was actually from when I was defending my bachelor degree project. 
And for the final test, of course, I wanted to drive the rover a bit. So here is the rover driving. You can see the stop in the mechanism when the rover starts and you'll also see it when it stops. That's the M8 threaded rod thing I talked about that I plan on fixing in the next version. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed learning about my rover project. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below and I'll make sure to answer them. It's a still a work in progress project, so as soon as I get it to a satisfactory level, I'll make sure to publish all of the CAD models and all of the code for it. So stay tuned. Bye.